Do 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 sky pilots boom boom how high can you fly you never ever ever reach the sky what oh come on man little Eric Bergen this morning the before showtime and you didn't think that I was gonna go all sky pilots and Monterey on you come on man. My opinion, here we go on a Monday morning, my opinion, but in my opinion, uh, Eric Bergden has one of the, uh, probably the most distinctive voices of the uh, singers, voice, whatever, of the uh, uh, British invasion. Um, Oh yeah, of course, Mac, Mac. I got moves like Chaga, moves like Chaga, you know. I can't get no, do, do, do. Yeah, but remember though that Eric Bergman, unlike Mac, Eric Bergman was a front man for actually two uh, 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 kick-ass uh, 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 rock and roll, classic rock and roll. Uh, uh, bands. Um, of course, we, the animals, Eric Bergen and the animals, and we were doing Sky Pilot and, and Monterey and all that, but uh, he was also the front man for a, uh, for war. Yeah, yeah. Spill the wine, dig that girl. Spill the wine, dig that girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, Eric Bergen is, uh, yeah, just yelling and screaming this morning. Um, Eric Bergen was, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty instrumental. Those are two bands that we know. Um, we've talked about, uh, oh, here we go, you know. We, we've talked about the British Invasion before, um, but it really was, it was more than, it was it was more than it was actually it was much more than a a, 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 a cultural it, it was a whole cultural phenomena uh, the whole uh, uh, the whole British mod rock pop culture that uh, you know we were still over here in the fifties yeah so you know it took over it took over in the mid sixties. Uh, 64 and big foothold. By 65, it had been taken over. Uh, the, 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 the British bands, it's like a, I'm glad you asked, Andy. It's like a, it's like a veritable who's who of, of rock bands, uh, uh, from, from that era. You know, the, the British invasion, uh, consisted of bands like the Beatles, uh, the Rolling Stones, the Who, the Kinks, uh, Zombies, Small Faces, uh, Dave Clark Five, Spencer Davis Group, uh, I'm Henry the Old Italian, you know, Herman's Hermits, uh, The Hollies, uh, I, I already said the Animals, but you know, we'll say them again, Eric Burton did the Animals. Uh, um, Gary Pacemakers, good one, Andy. Uh, Manford Man. Uh, don't forget the Yardbirds. That was Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page. That was both and Eric Clapton, all in the three, you know, all in the uh, in one band, but they weren't all there at the same time. Clapton was there by himself, right? Then Jeff Beck was there with Jimmy Page. Jeff Beck had the more hits that the Yardbirds are more known for the uh, the hits that uh, are uh, that were uh, uh, involved with uh, Jeff Beck, okay. Um, and don't forget that um, you know as as well as all those bands like you know the Kinks and the Who and all that, uh, they had solo artists too that were that were well 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 f known. And um, uh, uh, that had an influence uh, um, um, on, uh, on, on, on American culture, okay? Um, solo artists, like who? Uh, 
Dusty Springfield, uh, Petula Clark, uh, don't sleep in the subway, darling, don't cry in the pouring rain. Yeah, yeah, big hit in America. Uh, well, yeah, big hit in America. That was Petula Clark. Uh, Cecilia Black. Uh, Donovan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom Jones is a good one. Tom Jones. So, basically, uh, what was going on is that I think that basically, if you kind of look at the era... Uh, I, I think that the the American uh, teenager, the, the American culture was uh, the, they were ripe for a change. Um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, you know, it's like what were they getting? What, what, what did they have over there? They had like, you know, they had like uh, the Frankie Valley, okay. You know, one guy. Uh, this is like it's, this. We had America had the single single singers even in the fifties. Um, not a lot of bands. All right, Buddy Holly. Not a, crickets, notwithstanding. But at the it, 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 after the fifties and the early sixties, um, we had people like Frankie Valley. We had Fabian, <laughs> and then we had a, a shit ton of Bobbies. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, we had Bobbies. We had uh, we had Bob uh, had uh, Bobby Darren, okay, and uh, we had Bobby Vinton, and we had Bobby Rydell, and wait, there's more. Um, Bobby V, V E E, and of course they were still wearing <laughs> Bobby socks. Yeah, I was. You knew I was throwing it in there, Andy. Come on, man. Come on, man. When did it happen? When the? Can I pinpoint? Of course I can pinpoint. Of course I can. When it comes to classic rock music, uh, British invasions, American uh, uh, counter uh, uh, invasions, uh, counterculture of music, of course I can, I can pinpoint it. Well, it was a chilly night in October of 1963. And... What happened was, is that the very first newspaper articles started to appear. And what were they saying? I'm glad you asked, Andy. What were they saying? Something about some fad over in Britain in 63 that had started that, that summer, and it was called... Beatlemania or something like that. Beatles? Beetle? Like the bug Beatles? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, and we don't have it in my notes, but that's an interesting point that Jack Parr uh, uh, threw it up uh, 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 as a joke, and it got, what, 3 million views? Yeah. Viewers? TV? Yep, 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 yep. Now, what happened was, so February 1964, so the United States picked up the invasion in, 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 and the Beatles were the forerunners. I could name, you know, like I did, the Who, the Stones, you know, Herman's Hermans, you know, you know but the, 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 the Beatles were the first one to, ca to cause the, the talk. We got talk going on. They're talking about something, Andy, over in Britain. What is it? It's Beatlemania. We got a beetle boot on and we got a beetle haircut. Okay? But February, February 1964, it was a cold night. Yep, 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 yep. It was a cold night in, in, in February 
1964, it's snowy, in Michigan, in Farmington, Michigan, where I was living, it was. I don't know if it was in Phoenix, Andy. I don't think it was snowing in Phoenix in February in 1964. I face sometimes. Anyway, some 73 million, 73 million viewers. We're watching Beatlemania in its finest on the Ed Sullivan Show on National. 73 million viewers, Andy, at that time, in, in, in 19 February of 1964, that was like, and the race is on, and you know, it's like, whoa! Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I remember that night. I remember that night. It was 64. So I would have been eight years old, uh, 66, eight years old. I'm doing the math in my head. I was told there'd be no math on this show ever. And what am I doing? I'm trying to figure out how old I was in 64. And that, that isn't that hard. Okay, if you're math challenged like it, I was eight, okay? I'm sure. Yes, I was eight. All right. And I remember that it was a really big deal. It was on in the evening. I, I think it was a Sunday evening. And Grandma came over. Grandpa didn't come over. I think Grandpa came over, but he stayed downstairs. And we all went upstairs to my brother's room. He had this, like, black and white TV. And Grandma and my brother and me and my mom... And I think my dad was downstairs. My dad and grandpa were downstairs probably drinking beer. Like, what the hell are they all doing about there? They're, they're all wearing wigs. And we all had wigs on. And it was Beatlemania. And we watched Ed Sullivan. It was like, yeah, I want to hold your hand. Oh, I tell you something. Beer to beer to beer music you'll understand. When I, I know they, they play I Want to Hold Your Hand. And then they do, 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 do. But see what? Yeah. So it was a big deal. It was, you know, it was Grandma and Grandpa and everybody still alive. We're all wearing Beatle wigs and watching Beatles on black and white TV. Okay, along with 73, 74 million other Americans. Um, I'd mention, uh, you know, that it was like, it, it, music, but it's it's like, can you see what happened in the in the in the house? You know, I mean, grandma and mom and and my older brother. <coughs> yeah, I've talked about my older brother. He was Richie Cunningham for sure. He was absolutely Richie Cunningham growing up. He was. I ain't that Richie. That's another podcast. I think we touched on it, but anyway. You know, I've mentioned, but look what, well, look what it did. It affected not only musically, but grandma and every, we're all wearing wigs. Okay, it was more than, uh, <coughs> yeah, you're right. It was more than music, okay? It was more than just the bands and the influence the bands had on American culture. It was much more. The British invasion was so much more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, the, the whole culture we adapted as a society, the whole culture. Uh, all of a sudden, BSA motorcycles were popular, and everyone had to have a run BSA rocket. Yeah, strangely enough, British small arms. That's what the company made. They made kick ass motorcycles. They got popular in the 60s because they were British. Right. Right, they were British. All of a sudden, everybody, you know, had to have, you know, uh, you know, they had to have uh, the, 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 we had to have a PSA because it's British. Right, right. Everybody, you know, it was catching on. It's, it's a phenomena. It's catching on like wildfire. The music brought it over. You got Eric Burton and the animals. Next thing you know, everybody's buying uh, BSA rockets and wearing wigs and watching TV. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. And do you remember Mary Poppins? Okay. 
everybody's like, I got, of course I remember Ploppins, you know. I remember, you know. Do you, you remember the British actress that came over to play the part? Just a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. The medicine go down. And a spoonful. Yes, cream was made of spoonful. Yeah. What was uh, 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 Mary Poppins uh, uh, was the uh, was the uh, became the most Oscar nominated and Oscar winning film in Disney history. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of history. That's up to date, right? As of this morning, you wikied it. And you threw it up just to make sure. All right. There it is, right there. Okay. Most Oscar winning film. You think that you could get the Fox any bigger? I got my glasses up for crying out loud. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and basically it's a film about a guy who uh, hires a stranger to boot, you know, she's a stranger to start with to come in and watch his kids, and she's all about giving them cough syrup, right? Codeine cough syrup, knock, just to put you to knock them right out, you know? How are the kids today? They were great. Gave him some medicine. He didn't even catch to it. He was like, hum de 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 hum de 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 hum de 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 He didn't care. Yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't just, it just it wasn't just uh, Julie Andrews. No, there, no, it was other people. You remember Audrey Hepburn? Yeah, guess what? British, Audrey Hepburn. My Fair Lady. Remember that movie? Oscar nominated, yeah. What about Oliver? Okay. What about the what's new pussy cat? Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's new pussy cat? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, yeah, that one. Okay, all British, all part of the British invasion. Okay, uh, do I have more? <laughs> the name is Bond, James Bond. You guessed it. Sean Connery, the whole kit and caboodle, British. He's a government agent working for the British. We're like, oh my God, eating it up. And James Bond is like, he's so British, it's like tea and crumpets, you know. Yeah, we're going to have some tea and crumpets for brunch with James Bond. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Shaken, not stirred. Yeah, so, and it wasn't just movies. You know, it wasn't just Mary Poppins and My Fair Lady and Oliver and James Bond movies. Go finger. It was television. Yeah, Roger Moore, remember? He became Bond, but at the time, Roger Moore was the saint. And, uh, oh, heck no. The, look up the girl's name that was in The Avengers. Yeah. Yeah, now the Avengers, everybody's, ah, oh, the Avengers is just great. So we got music, movies, I mean, she, they brought a whole new way to dress, too. The British Invasion, where all my brother was wearing in high school, my brother was wearing in high school white Levi's, uh, uh, panty loafers, Okay, he would, he was Richie Cunningham, and he was hanging out with Ralph Balfe and, 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 and Potsy Weber. They, but not the Fonz, okay? They didn't dress like that. They were like mod. It was mod, okay? That's what the, that's what, the, what, what it was referred to as mod. It was, uh, it was a way of dress. It was, uh, uh, uh granny glasses, uh, uh, Bell bottoms, striped pants, polka dot shirts, wild colors, wild artworks, uh, polka dot bikinis, sandals and flip flops and mini skirts made their appearance in the British invasion. Hey, mini skirts and flip flops, man, that's a match made in heaven. Yeah, and it was a part of the British invasion, the dress style. 
the hairstyle. All of a sudden, we weren't having really short hair like my brother had. We were having long hair. We got a beetle haircut. We went, uh, like I said, from a culture to, uh, uh, from like uh, uh, American uh, graffiti and your Richie Cunningham and Happy Days to the Rolling Stones on Ed Sullivan and the Beatles and, and of course the you know the music in America countered but I'm talking about what the British invasion brought you know it brought movie television music a way of uh, uh, an attitude, those swinging 60s. God, those Brits are so swinging. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Julianne, uh, the, the, the Julie Andrews was America's golden girl, and she was British as British could be. Yeah, just a spoonful of sugar. Yeah, some cough medicine. That'll help. Back in the 60s, cough medicine over the counter. Yep, you could get paragoric, cough medicine, and codeine too. Paragoric, for those that don't know, is opium. Yep, yep. I remember you, you, you flew through this up that I need to get in here, but you know, it's like. Connie Francis, she was a singer back then in, in the mid-60s, early 60s, and, and she said in an interview in one of the teen magazines in 64 that the, that the whole invasion uh, has changed music and the way that they were doing music, and nobody could get a decent hit until they did, uh, adapted the British invasion changed the way that we were doing music and so Elvis uh, and, and them had to take our, our, our one big guy, our big guys had, to, like I said, they had to adapt. They had to adapt. If you look at the charts, the Billboard charts, top 100 songs, 1964 and 1965, what you will find is that they are predominantly dominated by British bands, part of the British invasion, and so we're, we're the British. We're listening to the music. We're dressed in mod. We're growing our hair. I got my beetle boots on and my beetle haircut and my granny glasses on, and boom! It was all come over from uh, come over the pond. <coughs> it's just a, <coughs> a, cult <coughs> a culture of phenomena. People don't really understand how big it was. Kind of like today. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like today is. Yeah, it's a uh, good morning. Uh, yeah, we didn't say good morning yet. It's April 8th, uh, 2024. And guess what? It's totally Eclipse Day. And the cultural phenomena is slit switched from the British invasion to... Uh, just everybody, you know, I mean, come on, Andy, is it just me or is over half the country lost their freaking minds or what? Is it a cultural phenomenon not to accept science anymore? I mean, for trying out loud the stuff that I'm reading and the stuff that I'm hearing. It's like, it, you know, it's just like, it, 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 it's nothing you can do. It's a total eclipse of the heart. You knew I was going to do it. All right? You knew it. They knew it. Everybody knew it. Total eclipse of the heart. <laughs> I'm serious. So everybody's losing their absolute minds over this. Do you realize, first of all, that we just had a total eclipse in the United States of America in 2017? Okay, how far along goes that, Andy? I have to, seven years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, approximately. Maybe six years, give or take a few months. And guess what? Everything and everybody was just absolutely fine.
Okay? 2017, we had a total eclipse. Everything was okay. Now it's seven years later. We're having another total eclipse, and everybody in, in, is not okay. They are not okay, Andy. No, they are not okay. It, 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 it's now this time. Have you seen the stuff on social media and what the news is even saying? What our mainstream media, hey, what they're even saying? Yeah, yeah, it was just fine. You know, the rapture is coming today. Yeah, here in just a few hours, the rapture is coming. Yeah, it's total eclipse day. That's what the rapture is. That, that, that's, you know, if it's not the day that it's coming and the second coming is coming, then it, it, they just the math is wrong. Right, 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 right. But today is the rapture, okay? Um, oh, yeah, everybody's going to turn. They're going to shut the computers down. They're going to cell phones down. The government's going to shut the cameras down. Everything's going to shut down. Because the government's going to take over because it's a solar eclipse. Uh, that's not true. That's, that's not even close. That's nothing. We had one in 2017. Uh, 2017, we were all fine. I've heard there's going to be a nuclear attack. It's going to rain from the sky during brunch. We're not going to have an, an attack and. Lord help us, we're not going to do brunch. Okay? Uh, Big Brother. Right. Big Brother, George L. L. Yeah, yeah. Orwell. Uh, yeah. Right, right. 1984, it's going to take over. It's going to be fun in our cell phones. are going to do that song like Halloween 3 was. <laughs> Next thing you know, we're all going to, oh, 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 nothing to see here, you know. Right, yeah, I agree. All stores are going to close today. And the clock, the, 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 the eclipse, you know, the, the, the wither, crops will wither, you know. I know. I, I, holy stankies, Andy. Did no one even go to third grade science class? I mean, God damn. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. It's not falling. It's just, I mean, seriously. I saw a guy, I got to say it, NBC News. I'm not sure the guy's name, and it was like a couple days ago. And he was talking that, you know, that predicting an eclipse accurately is a relatively new phenomena, you know, and we, you know, we should be thankful for this. And I'm like, are you serious? Are you really serious? The Assyrians, there's records that have been discovered in 700 B.C., we're accurately predicting an eclipse. My God, you, you, Andy, 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 Andy. Do you see what happens when you don't trust science? Yeah, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Let's go sacrifice my, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I think. I thought that we had progressed farther as a culture, but evidently, I was wrong. So, no, uh, I'm looking at the clock. We don't have much of an eclipse. And we don't have too long to wait, actually. The clips will begin at about 10.38. That's about a little over two hours from now. And see, so you got to math to it again. And it will reach about 20% uh, uh, total coverage. Uh, you'll be able to see it. Uh, around, uh, you, you'll be able to see it around 11.28 here in Great Falls. So again, that starts at about 10.38, 
And about 1128 Great Falls, you'll be able to see that 20, 20%. Uh, it, everything should be over by about 1220. Now remember, for God's sake, when you're out, don't be looking at the sun. Oh my God, look, look at the sun! I'm going to look at the sun right now! It, 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 there's glasses that are, are made just for seeing this. Uh, you're going to get 20%. The weather, uh, ah, ah, but Andy, we're going to head out right now. We're going to head out right now and go look for some spots. Maybe we can find somewhere to go look at it. Got two hours to find a place to find it. Find us a good place to hunker down and film this. So, Please be careful. Watch your eyes. So we, next one's not coming for another 20 years. We've had a couple total eclipses. Bang, bang. I don't think I'll be down around in another 20 years. I might, but boo. Man. <laughs> Why did it say that eclipse? All right. We're out of here, Andy. Andy's giving me the high side because we got to pack up and go film the eclipse. So, without further ado, watch your eyes today. Okay? Spay and neuter. Adopt, don't shop. Rescue. Volunteer. And right after the eclipse, go adopt a shelter pet today. Have a great Monday, the 8th Total Eclipse Day. We will see you next Monday. Andy, we're out of here. He says we are out of here. Thanks and goodbye. <laughs>